In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss linear inequalities. Let us first recall our interval notation. If x is a number between a and b, but x can be a and x can also be equal to b, we use this notation. We represent it graphically like this one. x can be any values between a and b, including a and b. However, if x is strictly greater than a and strictly less than b, we have this one. There's a hole to indicate that a and b are not included. Here you have a is not included, so you have a hole there, but b is included. In this case, a is included, but b is not included. If x is greater than or equal to a, so we have this is a, a can be a possible value for x, that one. So we use a to infinity, and then a is less than x, and then here x is less than or equal to b. So B is included and in all the values on the left of B. And here, it's just the same except that B is not included. Let us recall some properties of inequality. So take note that this is the same as your addition property of equality. So this is saying that if you have an inequality, you can also add the same number on both sides of your inequality. The only difference is that for multiplication property, if you multiply a negative number on both sides of your inequality, the inequality sign flips. This properties also apply if your sign over here would be less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. Let us solve the following. So to solve inequalities, you treat it as if it's just an equality, a linear equality. It's just that you just have to be careful when you are multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative constant. So here, I will just collect all my x here. And then 5 minus 20. So I have 3x is less than negative 15. I will divide both sides by 3. So therefore, x is less than negative 5. Or negative 5 is greater than x. How does that look like? This is negative 5 and you want to find the values less than negative 5. Or in interval notation, this would be the interval negative infinity to negative 5. For our next example, you also have an inequality and then you also have fractions here. We simply multiply both sides by the LCD, which in this case is 12. So we have 12 times x minus 3 all over 3 is 4 times x minus 3 plus 12 times x minus 1 over 4 is 3 times x minus 1 greater than or equal to 1 fourth times 12 which is equal to 3. Let us distribute 4x minus 12 plus 3x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 3. Let us simplify this side. We have 7x minus 15 is greater than or equal to 3. So we get 18. 7x. So therefore, we can divide both sides by 7 and x is greater than or equal to 18 over 7. Graphically, this means that we have 18 over 7 here and x is greater than or equal to that. Using the interval notation, this is the interval closed 18 over 7 up to positive infinity. For our next example, again, we multiply both sides by the LCD to get rid of your denominator. Take note that we can multiply both sides by the LCD for this inequality because we are multiplying a constant. 
we will see later on that you cannot do that. You cannot multiply the LCD if the LCD includes a variable. The LCD in this case is 18. So we have 18 times 5 over 9x is 10x plus 18 times 5 over 6 is 15. Less than or equal to x over 2 times 18 is 9x plus 1 half times 18 is 9. I will collect all the x on this side. Therefore, I get negative 6 and x here. Graphically, this means that x appears on the left of negative 6. Using the interval notation, this is negative infinity up to negative 6 included. There are also cases wherein we have compound inequalities. A compound inequality includes two inequalities in one statement. How do we read this? This is read as 4 is less than x and less than or equal to 6. So remember that whenever you have compound inequalities, it always means and. Both should be satisfied. There are two ways to solve compound inequalities. One of them is to separate them into two separate inequalities. The other one is to leave the compound inequality intact and perform operations on all three parts at the same time. I will show both of these ways in our next slides. So here is an example of a compound inequality. For this inequality, what I will do is I will use method 2. I will let them remain intact. We are solving for x. So what do we need to eliminate first? We want to eliminate the constant 7 that was added to negative 2 fifths. So I will subtract 7 everywhere. So hence, 15 minus 7 is 8. Less than or equal to 7 and 7 will cancel out. So I'm left with negative 2 fifths x. Less than or equal to 21 minus 7 is 40. Since we are solving for x and x is multiplied to negative 2 fifths, how do we get rid of this coefficient? We multiply everything by the reciprocal of negative 2 fifths, which is negative 5 halves. Here I am now multiplying negative 5 halves. Take note that we multiplied a negative number. So therefore, from the multiplication property of inequality, if you are multiplying by a negative number, the inequality sign will flip. So this is going to be greater than or equal to. So therefore, this is 8 times negative 5 halves is negative 20 greater than or equal to x. Everything here will cancel. 14 times negative 5 halves is negative 35. So that means x is greater than or equal to negative 35 but less than or equal to negative 20. In interval notation, this is negative 35, negative 20. For our last example, we have this. Now, this is something we're in. We cannot solve it by letting the inequality remain in that. Why? Because we have x on all parts of your inequality. So, in this case, what we will do is we will separate them into two inequalities. So here I have 3 plus x greater than 7x minus 2 and the other one is 7x minus 2 greater than 5x minus 10. We will solve them separately. So here we have 7x minus x and I have 3 plus 2. So 6x and here it's going to be 5. Divide both sides by 6. So 5, 6 is greater than x. On this side, we have 7x minus 5x is greater than negative 10 
plus 2. So I have 2x is greater than negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, so we get that x is greater than negative 4. What is that word which joins them? You have end. So this means that x is less than, from here, 5, 6, and x is greater than negative 4. Graph that. We have negative 4, 5, 6. x is strictly greater than negative 4, but strictly less than 5, 6. In interval notation, we have negative 4, 5, 6.